I'm telling you like it is. Right now, today in the studio, we have a special guest, Karen Whiting, and we are so happy to have her. You are not just an author, but you are an author of many books, and it's so exciting, but you are also actually a host of a television show. Can you tell us about that? Yes, I used to host Puppets on Parade for education television, and we did all sorts of fun puppets. I had a large puppet ministry at the time, and I still have a new puppet book out and DVDs on puppetry because it's a great way to engage children and to work with them, whether you're doing a folded paper puppet or you're doing some elaborate, you know, I learned to make puppets under the person who made Miss Piggy for Sesame Street. Oh, my so goodness. So I can do small to big. Oh, I love that. You know, growing up, my sisters and I, um, our dad would do a lot of outreach on the street. So he had these puppets, and we would actually practice at home, and we would hold up Campbell noodle soup cans to strengthen our arms. I don't know what we were doing. But somebody taught us that, and we loved puppetry. And um, it was a great way to share the gospel. It is. It's a great way to share. And for children who are very shy that won't open up, it's a great way to get them to talk. They may not talk to an adult, but they'll talk to that puppet. And then we used water bottles to strengthen okay. the arms. But you do have to do yeah. that because you know what it's like to hold a puppet over your head for five minutes or more at a time. Wow. Well, I didn't do anything at your level. <laughs> but, um, you know, I am looking at these books that you've done. And I want to ask you, how many books have you written? 25 books, and I'm signing a contract this week for my next book. And you have tons of spare time, I'm sure. I don't know, 25 books. So ladies, um, guys, anybody watching out there, if you've ever thought that you wanted to write a book, what would you tell them? Um, how do you get going on your first one? First, you do sit down and write it and get it organized. But don't even worry about editing till you have done some writing. And then you can go back through and start that process. And if you're a beginner, you should go to a writer's conference and learn the craft of writing, really. Join a critique group so you can get feedback from other people as to what it's doing, because you think this is wonderful. Then you find out it's not so <laughs> wonderful, but the concept is good. And from there, you know, you just build on that, and you start letting people know what you're writing about, because as soon as you have the concept, you should be marketing that idea everywhere. Well, because I love there's that. a lot that goes hand in hand with that. You know, people can't come to your events if they don't know about them. They can't read your book if they don't know it exists. And so many people have something inside of them, and maybe they're afraid to put it down, but we just want to encourage them um, to go for that first book. And so, wow, you've written 25 books. And so let me ask you another question. Did you always think that you were going to be a writer from when you were small? I mean, you've written 25 books. No, I'm a mathematician. Oh, My degree wow. is mathematics. I worked as a computer systems analyst in math modeling. People don't even know what that is. And I don't know. It either. wasn't <laughs> until I had children and everyone kept saying, You should write, you should write all these things you do with your children. You need to share that. And then I, when my first started college and my youngest started preschool, I'd been praying and went to a retreat and said, God, do you want me to write? And he was very clear, gave me a vision. Someone not knowing I had the vision gave me a painting of it the next morning. Wow. And uh, called me not to just write one, but to be a writer of many books. And so I'm writing until he tells me to stop. Wow. And you know <laughs> what? You listened. And you went away to a retreat. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I like to encourage people is we're so busy in the day-to-day -day life. Sometimes we have to separate ourselves so that we can hear directly um, what God is telling us. Well, I want to go right here to this first book. It's called Nature Girl, A Guide to Caring for God's creation, and um, this looks so neat. Tell me what this is about. Well, the heart of this book really is to remind people that Romans 1.20 tells us that God's creation is the witness to his existence. And my feeling is, if we as Christians don't care for his creation, we are destroying the witness of God's existence, and we don't want to do that. So it really is to get girls particularly engaged in the outdoors, in nature, in all elements of it, whether it's energy or animals. And so there are crafts to do, science experiments, facts, quizzes, fun quizzes, quizzes to learn information, games to play, and a lot of ways to share information you're learning with other people and to do things together with other girls. I love this. Now, let me ask you. So I homeschool one of my children. Uh -huh. Um, actually had a heart surgery last year and so we said okay let's let's go home let's regroup and I know he's a boy but I think about all my friends who homeschool their daughters 
could this be maybe an additional curriculum or something fun that you yes, add to it? Yes, it definitely can because of all the facts in it. And each chapter can go with a science unit that you're doing, whether it's energy or uh, learning to take care of your own body and things, because that's in there too, including recipes for making your own skincare products. Well, that is really the, important, girls. Yep, yeah, <laughs> that's from the refrigerator, so... <laughs> All natural. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love it. And so it certainly should be in addition to your curriculum, and it's got devotions through it, just little short ones here and there to make sure you recognize and remember God is part of everything we do. I love it. Well, you know, one book that we don't have here, but you mentioned it to me. We were talking about mm -hmm. it. And um, it's about a family devotion. And yes. one thing we do, you know, at home, and I want to encourage you guys who are watching, we actually get our kids and we say, okay, everybody come on in. And we actually bring them into our room and we're laying on the bed and on the carpet. And we say, before we go to bed, you know, our day's busy. You know, our kids, we're running in a million different directions. Mm -hmm. And we say, we're going to do a devotion. Even if it's quick, we're going to have family time together. Right. We really think that's important. But you have a book on that. I do. 52 Devotions for Busy Families. Okay. That's <laughs> doing so well, they're having me do a second one. That is an a la carte sort of thing that every week there is a verse, there is a focus, and there's a family beatitude for it. Mm. So happy is the family who shares stories for they will build memories or whatever that focus is that week. There's a story, there's a Bible story connection, but then there are activities. You can choose from up to four different activities. You might, this week, it's so busy we're doing one. Next week, it's not busy, let's do them all. Right. And there are chat prompts that you can do one each evening as part of your devotion or do them in the car on the go. And it's a small enough book to fit in mom's purse. And then there's a special prompt for scrapbooking or journaling because a lot of us are busy scrapping, memory, you know, doing memories of all our family life, and we don't do any faith scrapbook. That's so good. And this I is don't to think prompt I ever thought of that. A, a, a scrapping to go along with what that theme is that week. Oh, okay. And so you get to add that in, and you can add a picture and whatever you want with that. But that way, at the end of a year, you have a scrapbook of your faith journey as a family. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love that idea. Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, you girls that are in all this crafts, what a great idea that we can look back as a family and go, this is how we've grown in the Lord. Yes. And, you know, one thing, I just had two kids recently graduate from high school. And we had a display, and you know moms were out there, and we want to have like the best display of our kids. <laughs> but how cool would that be to show that Christ has been a part of our history, right. not just our ribbons for our swim team or mm. basketball trophies, but that we actually can go back and go, look, here with some journal pieces our children did. Yes. I think that's fantastic. You've got another book here, Raising a Young Modern Day Princess. <laughs> Tell me about that. Right, the subtitle tells a lot. Growing the Fruit of the Spirit in Your Little Girl. Now, moms, you have to know every chapter has a whole dad section and dad-daughter activities. Okay, okay. We don't want to leave dads out. So many parenting books don't have that slice of it. And so there are stories my co-author Doreen and I share each our story with each fruit, whether it's self-control. So yeah, we got real about the tantrums my daughters had. And things, Come on. As well as what do we do to overcome those things and how do we grow that fruit in that girl, the fruit of kindness, especially with mean girls these days and things. And there are over 110 hands-on activities you can do with your child while you're going through the book as the mom wow. and dad. Okay, well you have a sticker on here. <laughs> I'm just gonna call it out. But why does it say 2017 winner? What? Oh, yes. That She's like, a, I've written so yes. many books, I don't even remember. That is the but you? EIE winner. It's a, a winner for the best um, edited book uh, in wow. that category of nonfiction. In that so, category. you know, it's award winning, <laughs> and I mean, I think that's right. so well, fantastic. It is a focus on the family book. So, we had a wonderful editor at Focus. <laughs> okay, well, focus on the family. If you don't know who they are, I'm going to give them a little plug. But I just absolutely love them, and Dr. James Dobson, and all these great people that are wonderful. <laughs> influences I mean they're kind of the go-to when you're having some family um, issues going on let me ask you a question this last book that we have right here I mean you have so many but I mean this yeah. just the cover 
um, really just speaks to my heart and it's the gift of bread recipes for heart and the table mm -hmm. what inspired this book this, this is, is different from I, your kids ones this is the one I thought God wanted me to write at first it took 22 years to have the right publisher for it to say yes I'll give you a contract so don't ever give up if you have an idea okay and yeah I could have self-published but God kept saying no and I said okay I, my choice is do I want to rush it myself and have an Ishmael or do I want an Isaac and have it God's way so mm -hmm. I waited for God love the book I grew up in the restaurant business my grandparents two houses from me my uncle next to me had restaurants okay and so from the time I was like this high I was making breads and I was cooking a lot of oh. things and bread became something so special to me but with that I just zoned in all the time on bread in the Bible anytime we were, I was reading it talking about it enjoying communion with people of breaking bread and being a very family pro family person I also realized one of the breakdowns of the family is not having meals together mm -hmm. or rushing through it when you have homemade bread you sit and you savor yeah I open it with a story there's a heartwarming story in every chapter as well as a recipe or tips on making bread and then insights into bread in the Bible I open it with my children I did what my mother did coming in the door on a blustery cold day when we were living in New York or Connecticut and smelling the bread coming out of the oh, oven oh I love it hot bread and they were like oh mom I'll get the drinks I'll get the butter I'll get the honey and we would sit down and as soon as they started eating that bread and feeling good they'd relax and just start talking about the day very different if they just come in and grab some other snack and oh how was your day good what'd you do stuff you know mm -hmm. they just really shared and homemade bread has that sense of just having us open up the aroma hits our senses the taste the flavor everything and all of a sudden we relax and we talk and we share that's right and it's in those sharing moments that we get to hear each other's heart Yes. I don't know about you, is it just me <laughs> salivating hearing about this bread? But you're right. You know, you can be driving down and you have that bakery. And I had a sister, I still have a sister, but she had got one of those bread making. Uh, we weren't probably as, as um, homemade as your family because they were, you know, in the restaurant business. But I remember with a minute she pulled that bread out. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister Felisa was so good with all that bread making. It mm -hmm. just drew us in. Yes. But you're right, you know, we need to stop as families. Mm -hmm. um, and you have children. Yes. How I many have children? Five children? You have five children. Three any boys, two girls. Wow. Any grandkids? Twelve grandchildren. <gasps> do you six love of it? Age. I do. I love that. And they like to make bread with me. Yeah, and it's in the kitchen. We can make so many memories. Yes. But today, you know, what do you what do you think today with this busy life that we have? You know, all of our children have yeah. phones and everybody's connected. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what would you say, um, you know, just to people that want to draw mm -hmm. their family back? I would say even now, even if you go and get the refrigerated dough and put it in the oven, when you start to take it out, everyone drifts into the kitchen because they get this aroma they weren't used to. And you, you can take that refrigerated dough and there's tips on using electric machine okay. as well as refrigerated doughs in there too. And you can add into it cinnamon and raisins and things and make it your own before you put it in that oven. And they all come in, what's that, Mom? Well, sit down and I'll show you and let's have it together and next time you can cook with me. So it's like a magnet. So it's a magnet, yes, that draws them in and keeps them there for a little while as they enjoy that bread. And so, you know, I'm sitting here with you. We've looked at just a few of your books, but you're not done writing. And no, are not. you still getting contracts? What's happening with all yes, that? Yes, I'm signing a contract this week. The Family Devotional is doing so well. I'm going to do another one. You want a little peek into what it is? Most yes, yeah. Here. Okay, we get the secret. <laughs> We're not sure of the final title, but at the moment, the working title is 52 Devotions for Families Who Impact Lives. Oh, I like who that. Serve. So it's for families who may already be firefighters, military, church volunteers, children who are doing their own volunteer type things. We'll pick up stories on them too. And it's also for the families who want to serve and who want to know what it's like and how we can we support the people who do serve. Okay, I, I love that. And you know what? Don't make any excuses. We don't have enough time because devotionals are written short enough that we can just set apart a little time mm -hmm. with our family. Karen, I want to end this right now with just a prayer. Would you mind praying for those that are listening right now? Maybe they're having a hard time pulling their family together and, and doing a devotion or sharing the gospel with them. Could you pray for those families? I sure can. Dear Lord, 
we just love you so much. And we are so glad that you are our father, that we may not have had a traditional family, a functional family, but we can have one starting right now with you, Lord. And we just thank you so much for that, that you bring people to walk alongside us, that you give us books that share how to have a functional family now and how to bless our family. We may be rushing off and busy, but we know you can help us slow down for the important moments of our life and a few moments every day with our children make such a difference in life. And we just ask that you will help us remember to slow down each day for you and for the people we love to connect with one another and to reconnect each day. And we just thank you so much for Rosalind and her whole ministry as you bless more people through her. And we just so thank you that you let us be tools to help bless others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Karen Whiting, you've got the gift of Brad. This is amazing. <laughs> Look her up. If people want to find your, I mean, I guess they're available wherever books are available. They certainly are. And they can also go to my website, karenwhiting.com, www.karenwhiting.com. Find me on Facebook. I love to chat with people and, you know, join in a conversation with me. Oh, I love that. So if you're on Facebook, she's going to answer back. Thank you guys for tuning in.